What's up? My name is TechnoBee here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how you can clean up your context menu on Windows. It's really simple and the well-known methods are really confusing to say the least. Essentially, if you right click on your desktop, you may have something a lot larger than this. Maybe you right click on a file or a folder and you end up with a context menu that takes ages to load, is super cluttered and filled with things you just don't use. How do you clean it up? Well, it's actually really simple if you know how to do it. Everything's hidden away in the Windows registry, so you could do it manually, or you could use well-known tools that take a while to learn and get around, or you can really simplify the process with open source tools. One of them I'll be showing you here. In the description down below, you'll find a link to the Context Menu Manager. While this page isn't in English, you can click English here and view the README in English. Essentially, you can download a version of it and simply tick what you want, tick what you don't want, and easily create new menu items, which is the really exciting bit about this software. Giving this a quick scroll, it was actually filled with a lot more settings that I've previously seen in other programs, so I'll be covering it here as it's a really useful power user tool. So when you head across to this page, on the right-hand side, you'll find releases. Simply click the latest release here, then click one of these EXEs to download it. I'll choose the second one. When it's done, simply click on it to open it up. Upon opening it for the first time, you'll see this. Simply click yes, then we'll choose English and OK. Then it'll download the English language pack and it should ask you to restart the program. If it doesn't, simply close it, reopen it, and just like that, it'll be in English for us to use. That only happens on the first launch, however, and after that, it should be in English thereon. So we have different categories on the side here, and inside of each of these categories, we have multiple programs and different things that appear in our context menu. While most of these are self-explanatory and you'll see them appear in context menus, some of them don't really explain what they are and you'll need to toggle them off to see exactly what changes. For example, this one here affects files. So if I create a new file here and simply right-click it, you'll see Upload with ShareX. Of course, we can open the software and disable it, However, we can also do it from the Windows Context Menu Manager. Most of these you can't actually disable at all unless we use a program like this. So I'll turn off Upload with ShareX here. By doing so and right-clicking on a file, you'll see we no longer have the ShareX option and it's successfully hidden away. Great. All you need to do is find out what you don't want to see and customize it as you see fit. There is File, which is any file on your PC, Folder, which is a folder like this. When you right click on a folder, you'll see a context menu, the folder options here, such as this one, if I turn it on, will appear in the right click menu, turn it off, it'll be gone. Same with the directory options over here. If I turn this on, right click, there's the option, turn it off, there's the option missing. If you don't know the difference, just consider them the same for now. Then background is whenever we right click on our desktop in an empty spot, or whenever we right click in an empty spot in a folder like this. Of course, enabling an option, it appears here. Disabling it, it will go away. Then we have desktop, which is only right-clicking on the desktop here. As you can see, this PC, if I turn it off and right-click, there is no longer this PC anywhere on this list. You can remove all of these if you wish and leave a really small menu, but of course you can turn them on if you see fit. Usually I'll just have display settings and that's pretty much it. Maybe also open in Windows Terminal. For some of these changes, nothing will happen until you restart Windows Explorer. You can do so by simply clicking the restart icon in the bottom right here. Though note that when you do, any folders that you have open will be closed, so just make a note of what you're looking at and what you currently have open. Then disk is simply whatever appears whenever you right click anything under this PC. For example, one of these drives here. If I turn on this option, for example, you'll see we now have a search. However, if I turn it off, and right click, the search option is now gone. Usually you'd use this to turn off things like turn BitLocker on, especially if you never use something like this. Then all objects, these appear in all places, no matter what you're right clicking. This PC appears whenever you right click an empty spot here, such as add a network location. If we turn it off, this PC appears whenever we right click this PC on the side here. See map network drive. If we turn this off, map network drive is still there refreshing Windows Explorer, checking once more, that option is now gone. Then we finally have Recycle Bin, which is for right-clicking the Recycle Bin icon, and finally Library. This is for any library screen here, like documents, pictures, etc., or at least as far as I understand. 
Then in a new section down here, we have new, which is the right click new field, which is really awesome that you can customize as you can remove all of these here, especially if you never use them. I personally have never used Microsoft Access databases or created PowerPoint presentations and Word documents from here ever. So for me, I'll definitely be turning pretty much all of these off. Now that I've removed absolutely everything I would be using, including that, right click new. This is a lot cleaner, even more. There we go. Nice and clean. On top of this, we can create new menu items, which is the really exciting thing about this program. If I click new here, then pick say a file extension, I'll pick say this file over here, then okay. You'll see at the very bottom, I can create a new file with that extension. Then restarting the Windows Explorer using the button here, right clicking and choosing new. You can see Opus audio file, etc. This is the new one that I've just added here. If I turn it off, I click new, that option is now gone. You seem to need to restart Windows Explorer whenever you add options here rather than removing them. So if you do need to, you can either open the task manager and restart from them. Otherwise, you can head across to this PC and simply toggle one of these off and back on or vice versa. When you do so, you'll get the restart option here. I assume there's maybe somewhere else we can do this, but that's just the simplest place as far as I understand. Then we have send to, which is the right click send to menu over here, which is really useful. Open with, once more, self-explanatory, this screen here. For some reason, Counter-Strike's found its way here. I have no idea why that is, but turning it off, right-click, open with, that option is no longer available. So we can really clean this up, especially considering that there's a 99% chance you'll never open anything in any of these programs this way. You'll usually set a default, and that's pretty much it. Then, Win X. This is for the context menu that pops up whenever you press Start and X. If I hit Start and X, you should see it appears in the bottom left. However, it doesn't seem to be appearing for now for some reason. Anyways, we can get even more advanced by opening the file type section here, where we can customize what happens whenever we right click on a shortcut, an exe file, for example, or a specified file type. We will need to click this, choose a file type, maybe MP4, and we can get really granular with what happens here. Of course, you won't do this for every file as, well, there's a ton of them, but it gives you really granular control over your PC. Same goes for perceived file type and folder type over here. The folder types we have are document, image, video, and audio. I suppose that's the difference over here where the directory only applies to file folders. Anyways, unknown file types once more and the menu analysis. Essentially, you can pick a file or a folder from your PC and it'll tell you whatever the options are for that, as well as where they appear from. For example, home, home and file types, etc. If we click on it or double click on it, it'll open it in the specified place, allowing us to customize exactly what happens. We can also drag and drop a file into the screen here, and it'll tell us exactly what appears whenever we right click on that file, giving us granular control over it once more, though we don't need to figure out what the extension is. We have other rules where we can get even more in depth with menu enhancements, detailed editing, though most of these aren't in English, drag and drop, which appears whenever we right click drag a file or a folder, this one here, and a couple of options over here, though for the most part, you'll be inside of the menu enhancements here. Enabling options such as copy content to clipboard, we can simply right click any file, and assuming it's a text file, we can copy content to clipboard. Then opening up Notepad, for example, and simply pasting it in, we have the contents of that file without even needing to open it up. There are tons of options here. It's especially worth a scroll through as some of these options can really save you time, especially if you find yourself using one of these really often without having a nice shortcut to it. For example, maybe right clicking to optimize drives here. Anyways, for most people, you'll find yourself stuck to the home tab here, file folder directory, and maybe background, that's pretty much it. This is a really powerful tool that I'm surprised hasn't been mentioned in more places. Anyways, once again, you'll find it linked in the description down below. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno Behavior Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.